everyone. This is Gina, psych nurse practitioner, where I talk about everything and anything mental health. Um, my channel does uh, mental health education videos and self-improvement. And today, as part of my recording, I'm talking this past few times, I've been focusing on trauma and different types of uh, scenarios and relationships. And today I'm going to talk about how do you deal with um, having been traumatized, especially sexually or being molested or having history of, um, you know, inappropriate touch, things like that. It can, it can have a whole different spectrum. How do you deal? What I've come to realize through research is for somebody who's a survivor, for somebody who knows a lot of people, including patients, close uh, family members, and all of that stuff who have had history of uh, sexual trauma. It's a lifetime journey of healing. And especially if you're going into or are in especially newer committed relationships or marriage, it can be triggering or it can bring up different um feelings so i want to highlight that when you've had history of sexual trauma um it will be it can be a lifetime process to heal over and to minimize trauma to minim minimize uh, triggers so how do you deal how do you thrive despite having had history of sexual trauma without becoming a victim or being victimized by the um by the history, because I know like from someone like um, Oprah has had that. And we all know her story. Some like Joyce Meyer, <laughs> you know, so those two women alone and not to mention, there's a lot of stigma around boys or men who are sexually traumatized, inappropriate touch, actual act, um, Different things, like I said, can be a spectrum of different things that could have happened. And really acknowledging that and knowing that you've had that is really important than being in denial. Because one of the ways when trauma is to fawn or dissociate, so you don't want to think about it. And then subconsciously, you dissociate from the experience it's a way to 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 um survive it's a way to go on but sometimes triggers can bring it up so knowing that sometimes triggers can bring it up it's important i had a patient one time who you know even just the smell or whoever was her abuser a certain type of um perfume when she passes over smells that it brings up a lot for for her um and, you know, like I said, there's a lot of stigma with boys and men with sexual abuse, sexual trauma. So don't talk about it. Many boys or men get sexually traumatized or abused, but they don't say it. Only a few to deal and get treatment for it and get help because sometimes it can change into aggression, promiscuity, um, not being able to sustain long term relationships. It can go from, you know, really damaging behaviors like alcoholism, substance use, aggression is another big one. Um, ADHD presentation, not being able to focus. It's, but all this stuff ties into trauma itself. But I'm specifically focusing today on sexual trauma, the big spectrum of it. So like I'm saying, being a little biased when I'm focusing on women, talking about Joyce Meyer, talking about example of um, Oprah, they will be able to be vocal about it. So acknowledging it, talking about it through therapy in a safe space, getting empathy from it and really working through it. And like I said, it can be lifetime because you don't want to deprive yourself also of having fulfilling relationship because of that or be not being able to have good career or education or living life well. Because otherwise, then the abuse I have control constantly over your life. Um, so in a long-term relationship, really important if you're dating and you do have issue of sexual trauma to bring it up from the dating time to 
you know, in a safe environment, of course, and with somebody who is safe to, to, to uh, talk about that with. Probably in a couple session, in couple session, couples therapy, premarital counseling, which I highly recommend, by the way. Um, if we need to do driving lessons, driving tests, and get a license, and we are making the most important decision of our lifetimes, and we don't do premarital counseling or premarital learning, education, knowing each other's history, knowing each other's trauma, knowing each other's temperament, knowing each other's love languages, all this stuff. Some of us, like me, we didn't get that full spectrum of knowledge base of our partners before getting to this. Because this is the most important decision you could ever make in your life. Because some of this relationship end up um, with offsprings. And the last thing you want to do is pick the partner who might not be best fit because of their own history or your history of trauma and eventually not being a good fit. So some of the stuff, some of us learned it the hard way and um, more enlightening as time goes. And it's okay. So for me on my channel and being in this space, I like to share it to say, hey, if you're dating someone, you're looking to date someone, really important to do the deep dive. How were they raised? Who were their parents? What is their trauma? Do they have any? How do they deal money? What is their goal? What is their long-term goal? Say they're, they're going to be the head. If they're going to be leading you, where are they going to be leading you to? Where are you leading this? How's their level of empathy? How do they socialize? What's their love language? All those things, I cover the bases. I've now taken my time. I look at couples who are thriving and doing well. And I ask a lot of questions and I get nosy, of course, with boundaries, you know, to know, hey, how did it work? How are they working out? Do you have this? Do you have that? How did you manage? How did you survive it? All this stuff, we didn't, we didn't learn it when we were getting into it. Um, we learned it, but maybe to not this level of knowledge base, and maybe we just didn't have the resources at that time, or you know, sometimes it just happens to be like that. But the point is, if you do have that history, um, how it can bring up things when you end up in a relationship, especially when it comes to promiscuity, pornography. Um, financial infidelity, things like that can lead into bleeding into long-term relationships. So for women, I will say surround yourself with good foundational women with strong values. If you're a man, same thing, surround yourself with a bubble of good relationships, good <laughs> relationship and emphasis on good because Bad relationship, bad connections can also lead to more triggers, more invalidating, and really not digging into what the cause is. And a lot of it could be from sexual history of trauma. So strong women, especially women who understand or they themselves have had some of that history of sexual trauma, so they are more understanding and empathetic. And if you're going to get a therapist, get a therapist who's really versed in that world of sexual his trauma and treatment. Um, so you're not getting into relationship with enablers and, you know, people might be more toxic towards what you're experiencing. Because so a lot of the stuff might be coming up, might be just a lot of it related to untreated trauma, especially sexual trauma. A lot of people have a lot of shame. There are so many people who might even be raped and end up pregnant from being raped or incest, things like that happen. Many different, you're listening to me, you're not from where, you know, where I am and from, you know, many other countries where that is okay or trauma from, you know, setting relationship where or setting marriages where multiple um, wives or whatever <laughs> wives partners are allowable and be a big trigger for um, people who have history of trauma or being, you know, raped or abused or um, being validated in that way. Um, 
So surrounding yourself with people who can feed more of a positive energy is so important besides looking for trauma help, focus on trauma help, not just therapy, because sometimes just talking about it over and over can be a trigger as well. So we're actually doing the work of it, like cold therapy, cryotherapy, acupuncture. First, we'll be accepting it, accepting what happened, relieving it with maybe one or two you know, a couple sessions with therapy and then going into more EMDR, which is trauma-based therapy. Um, Family-centered therapy is also important. Um, she's really doing the work, coaching, finding a mentor, which will be from the women or the men that I talked about to surround yourself with good, positive people. Really leaning on faith is also important because sending things happen in our lives and what I've come to find out in the journey of life, it helps so you can bounce us off of it and be stronger and more resilient. God doesn't promise us he will not give us troubles, but in that trouble, he's right there to take us through it. There might be some reason beyond understanding that that could have happened. Not that I'm excusing the, the, the experience by any means, but yes, you had that experience. Now what? How do you go forward from it? So sometimes leaning on a higher power like God or whatever else you believe in, nature, you know, if you're Muslim, if you're Islam, you know, you, you believe in, um, 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 you know, going to pray at the mosque um, and following um, your Islamic rules, leaning on that faith. If you're a Buddhist, uh, if you're a non-believer, leaning, leaning on the universe, or so to speak, to bring you the right. So if you put that energy out, the energy comes to you. So my point is, yes, you might have that, but where do you go from there? How do you thrive and live like good so you're not leaving that to your abuser to be controlled remotely and really not get into drugs will set you off of habits that will not be more positive for you to thrive and live a beautiful, wonderful, great life that you've been given. If you're still here, I'm sure you have a God or the universe or whatever you believe in has a purpose for you, despite your history of being molested or abused or, you know, whatever word you want to use towards that. But I just wanted to highlight that type of trauma and how difficult it can be for both sexes if you ever had that history once, twice, or it was happening for a long span of time, you know, can, can really lead to a lot of um, difficult difficulties in life if that's not a knowledge treated and dealt with. So that's my video today on how to deal with sexual trauma. A few of the things that I mentioned could be helpful. Let me know if you know anything else that I didn't mention. And um, I will follow up on that. But hey, if you're listening to this video till then, till now, I'm sure you or somebody else you know have experienced, experienced sexual trauma. Seek help. There's help out there. There's hope. Don't numb yourself through life. Don't, don't dissociate through life. Um, there's treatments. There's treatments. There's hope. There's hope. Don't destroy yourself. Forgive yourself and forgive your abuser. And try to let it go. T-R-Y. Capital. Try. On that note, I'll catch you on my next video. 